Live from Vancouver, Canada, it's theCUBE at OpenStack Summit Vancouver 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsors EMC and jointly by Red Hat and Cisco. With additional sponsorship by Brocade and HP. And now your host, John Furrier. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in British Columbia here in Vancouver for OpenStack Summit. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by the next guest here, Jerome Lakav, the CEO of Scality. Um, if you've been following what we've been doing with CrowdChat in theCUBE, you know Scality. They did a great big deal with HP, and we've had a lot of conversations on the web that uh, you, many of you joined the conversation or can go there on CrowdChat about Scality, the relation with HP, and also what's going on in open source with OpenStack. Jerome, welcome to theCUBE. Good evening. Great. As a tribute to Canada, bonsoir. <laughs> bonsoir to, come, yeah, say bien, we're, good, we're doing good. Uh, my name is Jean Foudier, that's the French version, but I go by Furrier. Um, great venue, I mean, what do you think? I it's mean, beautiful, yeah. and there are many rooms. I mean, for once at an OpenStack Summit, we can get rooms, we can get small meetings, so that's great. We're right on the water, the weather's perfect, planes are landing. Um, it's a good vibe for OpenStack. Talk about what you guys are doing with OpenStack. What's your take on Scality, OpenStack, your role in the community? Share with the folks out there, Scality, and, and, and context to so, OpenStack. So we believe that you know, a few years from now, five, 10 years from now, the people running infrastructure will run infrastructure at large scale. If you have a small scale system, you'll just outsource it to the cloud. You, you'll use a cloud service, whether it's a Salesforce box or Office 365. So people running infrastructure will be doing that at large scale and they will be doing this in an architecture that is essentially software-based. We need a place for the different software components to be able to talk together, to find how to interface with each other. We're all building this future together, and OpenStack is the place where to meet, where to discuss, where both the development community, whether it's commercial or open source, and the users can come, mingle, and create the future. I was talking with Jonathan Bryce early in this morning, and then we had uh, Sam from Cloud Foundry on, and it's interesting, we're in this build-out mode right now. Absolutely. Heavy duty building out, a lot yeah. of builders. Yeah. But it's under a lot of pressure with cloud to build fast because of the pr competitive pressures, one, two, and the demand. So this comes back down, and one of the comments was the ops guys are feeling left behind because the development focus has always been, okay, front end, Apps, 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 but at the end of the day, you got to run this stuff on infrastructure. Yeah, I, I think it's a reality that uh, we're all trying to go as fast as we can, and we, in some way we're all behind. I mean, basically, uh, Google, Amazon, Facebook have led the way by doing it, and kind of doing it in the secrecy of their own data center, and uh, making it known to the world that it's possible to do it. And since then, everyone's like running as fast as possible to make it a reality for the enterprise world. And um, you know, the, the really, it's it's a case of the glass half full or half empty. Um, you can say we're not going fast enough. At the same time, I mean, we've got dozens of customers. Um, we we computed that Scality is powering storage for 300 million users on the planet. I mean, it's already a huge number. Yeah, storage so is not going uh, away. I mean, that's for sure. You know, there, there's already millions, hundreds of millions of people. Uh, using the things that we discuss here at work. So we had a crowdsource conversation. I want to share with you the, the, the top conversation. I want to get your thoughts on it. The, the conversation was taming the data dragon, because you mentioned storage. Storage is not going away. Around high availability, the number one discussion point was, yeah. how important is your data be available at all times? How do you balance cost versus availability? What approaches to high availability do you think work best? This generated the most conversation. So sure. what's your take on that? Uh, I mean, obviously everyone wants data available at all times. It's kind of become a cliche. Well, so I, I, think, that I think it should stop being a conversation. Uh, availability, high availability, working 24 by seven, Life patterns, work patterns have changed. People expect to have access to their information. And you know, this is now the, the continuation of my brain. Yeah. I don't live without it. Yeah. Um, we ha we and wearables we and internet of things, uh, sensors. It, it's all going in this direction. So we expect access 24 by seven, every day, even on Christmas day. Um, you know, scality towards that, uh, we offer SLAs. If it's not available, we pay our customers back. It's as simple as that. Our first customer was live in 2010. That system never went down. I mean, when I say never, I need not one minute, not one second. It's been serving consumers. Zero downtime. Yeah. and 100% zero downtime. 
You're saying and, that. And exactly, and that should be a de facto. It what was the scale of the application? Two million users. So it's real. So I it's mean, a real app. Yeah, I mean, it's real a, workloads. Yeah. It's a workhorse. Yeah, it, it's not half. It's a not billion. like it's like a mobile app for sales people. No, to it's two, dial mil in. two million users daily. Um, if it didn't work, you would see it on the newspaper. It's that kind of app. So high impact. Yeah. So if it went down, there'd be disruption. Totally. <laughs> so I mean, you know, very real. Same thing about data protection. By the way, I still hear a conversation about data protection. It should not be a conversation anymore. I mean, there's enough technology out there to protect the data very well, and we offer durability SLA where if we lose any piece of data, which really not, never happens, and that's why we're willing to pay our customers back. And we never have. Well, hold on, let's just drill on. What does durability mean to you? Because durability is a great word, building a durable company, having a durable product, but you have so, a specific SLA around durability. Explain that so, concept. So here we talk about data durability. When yeah. we store data, our, our idea of storage is that our business is to make your data secure and to guarantee you won't lose it. I mean, isn't that what yeah. we call storage? Yeah. So we think it's pretty basic. <laughs> and, if, and we think that if you're playing in the storage world, you need to keep data secure. So we're convinced of that. We're developing technology for that. And we're paying out if we miss our target, which honestly never happens. Yeah, and so you get backed up with, with warranty and whatnot and guarantees yeah. in SLA. In yeah. a search level agreement. Yes. All right, so what do you think about like Extreme IO with EMC? Obviously big seller, a lot of traction. SSDs are hot, obviously flash is obviously people going that way. Yeah. What's the balance between flash, spinning disk, and tape? I mean. And, and that will change over time. Uh, so uh, basically there's data that is very latency sensitive and today it should go on flash. Flash is the best technology for that. It's less than 20% of the data and for that data it's extremely valuable to go to an all flash array and or, or to have an hyper-converged system. Uh, and then there's 80% of the data where it, it's still very performance sensitive, but it's not so much latency sensitive. And here when we talk about latency, there's a difference between a machine to machine application, machine sensitive to microsecond, and a human is sensitive to about 50 millisecond. A human doesn't notice anything smaller than that. And um, you know, for anything, the 80% of the data that essentially is not so sensitive or latency, but still needs a lot of throughput, for example, like video application, this is very well on hard drive. You just need to have enough hard drive, and this is where a big scalable platform makes sense to be able to serve the performance. So you guys are doing pretty good. We're Business doing is really, good. We're, we're doing over 200% growth year over year. We're doing good. And you have a relation with HP and We have and a, a distribution agreement with HP, uh, which we announced last October. It's yeah, producing We cover deals. that. Yeah, absolutely. Cute conversation, of course. It's producing real deals, so we're very happy. Is it and joint sales or just go to market together? Uh, it's actually HP resell Skeleton. Okay, so they are actually taking you, yeah. your product to market. Yeah, they, they created okay. SKUs, they can resell was software. Was that new or is that part of the deal? I can't remember. That, that was part of the October okay. deal, yeah. That's fantastic. So yeah, that was a benchmark. Sales are up. Absolutely. Look, they buy you, are they going to buy you guys? I don't think so. <laughs> I, I, think, I think they're happy, we're happy. Everyone's happy, money's flowing on, off the tree. So I got to ask you about petabyte scale. How do you simplify stuff at, at that level? Zettabyte scales next after that. Simplicity's number one on everyone's mind. Absolutely. So talk about that, what's your vision? So, I mean, I often say jokingly, but only half jokingly, that what we sell is peace of mind. When we deploy at a customer, he can sleep at night. He doesn't have to do his maintenance at night. Our system handles disk failures. You don't have to wake up for a disk failure. And uh, basically, you know, I, all IT industry is about automation. We automate the complexity of handling large-scale storage. And now it's our software that's responsible for the complexity, not the human. That's it. I mean, it's, it, yeah. it, I mean, I can go into gory technical detail, but fundamentally, that's it. That's what we do. We we sell simplicity. Okay, so I got to ask you a final question of the segment. Thanks for coming on. I know it's last minute. You got that your stuff came right from the plane. Looks like you just got in town. Appreciate you spending the time to, uh, to share your insights. Um, moving forward, what are you looking at? What's on your chessboard? What are you monitoring? What are you watching in the landscape? As, as CEO and also technologist, because you are doing so well right now, market shifts very fast, we have no idea what's next in the innovation cycle we're seeing. A <laughs> um, lot of dynamics, a lot of pressure. So to go from petabyte to exabyte and zettabyte, uh, we need to get better on power consumption. So old technologies that three, five years from now will be able to store with less power consumption are interesting to me. Uh, there are the new uh, IP drives uh, from Seagate is an example of that. 
Um, another example of that is some flash technologies that you can power off and still remember data. Anything that's going to be about very large quantities of data that are stored without requiring electricity. Final question, OpenStack, what's your take of the community? Where do you need to see it go? Are they doing okay? You've given them a good grade. Do they pedal faster? Is it going too slow? Good, bad, ugly, what's your take on OpenStack? Where's it going? I, I, th I think OpenStack is an organization that is seeing growing pain, and, and we all always say that growing pain are a good kind of pain, but there's still pain. Um, what I'm seeing uh, summit as after summit is a community that is maturing, maturing in their communication, maturing in their technology savviness, maturing in their experience. I think it's all going in the right direction. Uh, could they go faster? I think it would be unrealistic. So I think it's the, the rest of the industry to essentially go at that pace. Well, merci for joining us on this CUBE interview. Thank you very much, as they say uh, in, uh, in, in French. This is the CUBE, we're here with Jerome. Lacat from Scality, CEO, doing great. We had him on theCUBE before with Leo. We had some crowd chats. Join the conversation on crowdchat.net and here in theCUBE. We'll be right back with more after this short break. Thank you.